Hi, this is Tutor Nick P, and this is Prefix 6. The prefix today is quasi, uh, Q-U-A-S-I, you know, as a word beginning. Okay, somebody wants a screenshot? All right, do it right now. Let's get right to it. Quasi is a prefix that means partly and is used with uh, nouns and adjectives. Okay, it means something is similar in some ways, but it's not actually that thing or is pretending to be, or almost but, but again, not quite, not exactly. So it's quasi, partially, partly, but not really, not completely. All right, let's continue. Quasi comes from Latin meaning as if it were, or almost. All right, let's continue. Uh, and here we have a number of examples of ones that you may hear. Uh, something could be quasi-legal, uh, means partly legal, or legal to a certain extent. So here's an example sentence. You could say, that rule only has a quasi-legal status. If challenged, it may be ruled as unconstitutional. Okay. Next one, quasi-criminal. Having characteristics that are bordering on being criminal. Uh, all right, and, you know, when I checked out this one, it says, a common example of quasi-criminal is a court's right to punish a delinquent parent for not paying child support and punishing him or her with a jail sentence. So this is, this is quasi-criminal. Okay. All right, let's continue. Uh, quasi-governmental, you know, again, partially, uh, partly governmental, having um, a certain amount of, uh, oh, so if something is, yeah, uh, again, if something is quasi-governmental, basically, you're yeah, having a certain amount of funding and influence from the government. All right. Let's continue. Uh, that country has a quasi-governmental health care system. It is um, partly government funded, but run privately. Okay. And all right, we have quasi-musical, having aspects or parts of a musical, but in fact, it is not. So it's not really, um, doesn't really fall into the category of a musical. Uh, let's, uh, here's the example sentence. That play was labeled a quasi-musical. Well, maybe they had some songs in it, but not really a musical. All right, let's continue. Now, quasi-moto, we got, we got two meanings for quasi-moto. Uh, and if it's two words, it has this meaning. Uh, what, what we sometimes call low Sunday or the Sunday after Easter. Okay, that could be quasi-moto. And the second meaning is the main character in the classic novel... The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Yeah, everybody remembers that big hunchback. His name was Quasimodo, even though that was a, a single word. Okay. Uh, the Low Sunday was named Quasimodo due to the letter of St. Peter. Uh, the quote in Latin was Quasimodo genite uh, infatantes, which meant... Um, the newborn infants. He was saying basically the idea like when you get baptized and you become a Christian that you're like a newborn infant, uh, that you have to learn and you have to develop and grow into the part. That's kind of what it was meant for. And that's where we got the name for the Sunday. Now, uh, the character in The Hunchback of Notre Dame is kind of a double meaning here uh, because in the story, supposedly... Um, what was it, the Pope or the Archbishop, uh, who ended up adopting Quasimodo. Yeah, the mother gave him up. The mother thought that the baby was cursed or something. And he found the baby on Low Sunday. So that could be one reason why he named him Quasimodo. But Quasimodo also means, like, again, Quasi means partly. Moto means shaped or formed. So it kind of had a double meaning. I think Victor Hugo did it on purpose that way. So because of the big hunchback that he had on his back, he was like not really a, a complete shape. He was partly shaped and, you know, he had the big wart covering one of his eyes too. So that's kind of what the meaning had. Okay, anyway, uh, I hope you got it. I hope it was clear. I hope it was informative. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.